All right, so let me just kind of remind ourselves where we are. This is called parakazorik, so things are being tossed around, right? And uh, the Mishnah began by talking about Zorik Meshusiyachid Lashusrab, or Shusrab Dushusiyachid Yachayev, that's obvious. Not just if you carry from inside to outside or outside to inside, if you throw it, right, it's going to be considered, a, it's a it's a Isra of, I guess, Hotza or Zorik. And then we had a discussion in the Mishnah. It was a machlokas in the Mishnah. If you go from Rishus Hayochid to Rishus Hayochid via Rishus Harabim, Rishus Hayochid through Rishus Harabim to Rishus Hayochid, and it didn't stop in the middle. And it was a machlokas between Rabbi Kiv and the Chachamim about that. The Gemara had a whole discussion. Was it related to Kluta? Was it under ten Tfachim? Was it related to Kluta? Was mm-hmm. it above ten Tfachim? Did it have to relate to how things were carried in the Midbar by the Bnei? I believe yeah, Bnei Kaz, right? Correct. And which they carried above Yud Fachim or not. That was a very long discussion. And we um, had a number of interpretations. In the very last piece, we talked about whether the concept of, of Lovewood or the concept that mm-hmm. the, anything that is gapped up with three Tfachim or anything that comes within the ground level of three Tfachim is considered like it's on the ground. And that's the same for walls. If there's a hole less than three Tfachim, it's gapped up. And that's Allah Lamosh Mosimai. So that's what we did last time. Now we're going to give about the reverse kind of scenario. What happens, and this is not mentioned in the mission, so there's going to be a machlokas, but what happens if you go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah via Rosh Hashanah? Okay, so, so now there can be, we're not talking about the issue of, of carrying more than um, four right. amos, that's a separate issue. But let's assume that it would be less than, that, that wouldn't be the issue. But you go from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah through Rosh Hashanah. So that's the machlokas. So we'll see what the opinions are. And then we'll actually bring a variation on that, which actually talks about going more than four, four amos in the Rosh Hashanah. So the issue that's really going to come up is about multiple isurim. Can you actually transgress more than one isur at one time? Can I throw with something the with the same action? Right, and you can just you can conjecture, and we're going to get to this in really two lines. If I throw from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah via Rosh Hashanah, if I am chayev, mm-hmm. am I chayev for once or chayev for two? Am I chayev for hotz, for hachnasa, bringing it into Rosh Hashanah, and chayev for hotza? from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah with the same action. Okay, that's going to be a discussion. We'll have a variation on that on Amad Beis. Okay. No, Kum Le Muramane would be two separate Yisurim, a more strict, a more strict Yisur and a less strict Yisur. If I'm Chayev Minat Torah, Misa, then I'm not Chayev to pay, pay material right. responses. Right. Right. This is whether I can actually be Chayev two Yisurim at the same time, and actually it's more complicated. It's whether I can be Chayev the same Yisur for twice doing the same action. It would even like, you know, if I do multiple, if I do all saw multiple times. Right, that's we normally you would think that everything we've learned until now says the maximum prohibitions that you can transgress on Shabbos is thirty nine, right. and therefore if you do an av and a tolda or two avs of the same av, you're only going to be chayiv once. So that's going to be a discussion here in the Gemara that's going to get mixed into this. So it's a little bit complicated. The sugi is only complicated because it takes a couple of hiccups back and forth and tries to figure out where it stands in a number of places, but it's really it's it's workable. It's not it's not really the the most complicated sugi you've seen. I don't think yet. Okay, Tan Rabbanon. So we have a brisa that says as follows: Mirshus Rabim, Lirshus Rabim, Rishus Yachad Bemtzav. You throw Rishus Rabim to Rishus Rabim, Rishus Yachad Bemtzav. We don't have a statement on this in the Mishnah. So Rabbi Mechayev and Chachamim Potim. So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi says you Chayev, and Chachamim say you Potter. And we don't really have a reason for it, but we're going to explain or give a clarification on it. And Rav Shmuel, the Amrei Tavayu, Rav Shmuel says that they both say, which is often not the case that Rav and Shmuel usually argue, but here Rav and Shmuel gang up together and say, this is what Lochayev Rebbe Ella, when Rebbe says Yechayev, he's only talking about a very special kind of Rosh Hashayachid. In other words, not every Rosh Hashayachid that you're going to throw through from Rosh Hashayachid to Rosh Hashayachid will make you Chayev. And in fact, uh, according to the Chachamim, you're not Chayev. But in a special case, according to Rebbe, there is a special type of Rosh Hashayachid called Rosh Hashayachid Makora, Makora. A covered Rosh Hashayachid. You've heard of a covered bridge? Mm-hmm. Right? There's a covered Rosh Hashayachid. So Rosh Hashayachid like a gazebo <coughs> or like some kind of awning that covers it. 
In other words, it's not really, it's not a house, it's not, it could be a house for that matter, but it does not have to be a house, it has to be a roofed type of Rishus Hayachid. And we're gonna, this is, this will come back to, um, in later in the, in the, about a daf or so, we'll talk about what about a Rishus Arabi Makora. What about if you have a Rosh Hashanah that's covered? Is that a Rosh Hashanah or not? Where's actually going to say? There are for sure in shuks and all these things. There must have been correct. Sure. So, would, but would that be a Rosh Hashanah min Torah? Would that be the real min Torah Rosh Hashanah which has a lot of requirements? It has to be wide, sixteen right. almost across. It has to be straight. Um, you have to have maybe six hundred thousand people travel on it. Maybe yes, maybe no. But does it also? What would happen if you have it roofed? So the Gemara, so yeah. if it's covered, kind of it's covered. So the Gemara actually will say that that's actually not a Rishus Sarabim. Okay, we'll have a whole discussion about that. But here, this is Rishus Sayachid. So Rishus Sayachid can be a chaser, a, a yard that is not covered. Right? Or it can be a yard that has some kind of covering over it. Like you can have put, um, as I said, an awning out of some sort or some type of, some type of umbrella. Right? So why? So the Gemara, so, so Rav and Shmuel explain that this is what Rebbe says, Yudchai for throwing through this, the Amrinan, Beisa Kaman Demal Yadami. You consider this roof, this roofed enclosure, he calls it a bayit, it does not have to be a bayit, this bayit is as if it's filled in. So if you think of it, even think of it as a house for him, just to make it easier to understand this. If I throw one, one window and comes out the other window and it didn't stop, uh, well, maybe I didn't do anything wrong, but if if I think of the the, well, the window or the air as really being filled in, it's filled in with air. It's got a roof. It's got a covering on top of it. So therefore, I kind of drop down the roof. I pretend it's a halachic fiction that it's considered as if it's filled in. So as if I I threw into a rishus hayachid, it it figuratively or halachically got stopped by all the stuff that was there, which is not there. And then it continued and started again and made its way through all the stuff that was there in Kav, which is not there, and made its way into Rosh Hashanah. This is this halachic fiction that Rabbi talks about. So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would only say your chayev from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah. Here the two open areas through Rosh Hashanah provide Rosh Hashanah had a cover on it. Right. And then we have this concept, the base of it's considered the base of command the Mal Yudami. We consider it as if it is filled in. Somehow there is a, the gas, the air is considered solidified within the house itself. It's not, or within the roofed area is not, but it's considered that way. Aval she'ena makora lo. However, if it's not covered, it would not be considered chayv, even according to Rabbi Hudanasi. Why? It's not clear. But I guess, in other words, you would say that maybe the concept of klutu kmishuncha only is going to apply in a rishus hayachid where it's covered because rishus hayachid stops. If rishus hayachid doesn't have a roof, it goes all the way up. You could argue if you have a roof on the rishus hayachid, you've kind of limited what that rishus hayachid actually is. So that's the first opinion here of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi of Rebbe and the Chachamim about Rishus Rabim to Rishus Hayachid via Rishus Rabim to Rishus Rabim via Rishus Hayachid. But the Rishus Hayachid goes up indefinitely. Correct. Even, no even if there is a roof. Correct. Even if there is a roof. But the fact that you have a roof, we're saying that what's below the roof is if you had a solid house. Treating it in a different way, it's enclosed in some way. It's a different form. It's it's klutuk mishuncha without klutuk mishuncha, and somehow it gets bounded by the fact that there's a roof on it. I'm not quite sure. The really I couldn't understand the reasoning fully. I'm not sure if Mister would have an art scroll here. No one's got an art scroll. Okay, so if there, what what art scroll says in terms of if there is a reason, but this seems to be an unusual halacha. The Gemara is less focused on trying to understand why, with the fact that the next statement, which is really gets injected here. Which is Amrav Yehuda Meshmuel Mechayev Hoya Rebbe Shtayim. That when Rebbe said you're Chayev in this Rishus Rabbi Rishus Ayachid Mekora, you're going to be Chayev too. And this is where see the Gemara seems to kind of just take a hiccup and say, well, we're not going to discuss so much Rishus Rabbi and Rishus Rabbi Rishus Ayachid. But the fact that it goes in and it's Mekora, it's considered as if it stops almost to say it's almost like a Klutu Kmishuncha in a different kind of format. So therefore, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would say, in this case where it is a roof Rishus Ayachid, you'll be Chayev too. Achas Mishum Hotzav, Yachas Mishum Achnasa. I guess really one, the first one is going to be Achnasa, right. the first one is going to be Hotzav. But you'll have two different stages here because if you travel, if Rabbi Yehuda is saying it's traveling through this house and the house is considered filled in well if it's filled in it's been impeded now it really hasn't been impeded because it's only going through the air that's outside as well but it's considered as if to say halachically there's this fiction in this Rishus Arabim to Rishus Arabim via Rishus Ayachid Makorah 
So this is the the statement that is said by Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel that when Rabbi Yehuda Nasi says Yechayev, it's not only only in the Rishus or Yachid Makora, but it's also it's a it's going to be Chayev twice, double jeopardy, double whammy. Still agreeing, it's only the one the Makora. He's just saying that that yeah, case. In such a case, you can be Chayev yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the Gemara feels that's a tremendous chiddush, and the Gemara actually asks whether Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would actually agree to that. As a conceptual, in other words, Rabbi Yehuda and Shmuel says that Remy, when he says Chayv, means Chayv twice. Chayv two. So the Gemara says, is this really possible? And you'll see the Gemara is going to, going to kind of say that, well, maybe Rabbi would not say this. We'll find a different kind of b'risa with someone else who we don't know would not say that you Chayv two. We'll see that Rabbi would not say Chayv two. So Yossi Rav Chana v'Kokashale. So Rav Chana was listening to this and he had the following kasha. Lemeimra the Mechayev Rebbe, Rebbe Atolda Makamov. Would you say that Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would say that Yechayev and Atolda in the same time that you're doing an Av? What's the Av? The Av is Hotza. Hachnasa is probably delineated or described as a as a as a Tolda. It's the same thing inverted, but the real Malacha that we kind of identify in the Torah is Ish Al Yetzem Im Komo or Al Totsu. It's about not being going out. Is the pasuk that is found the Vayakel and found also in another place, but not going out, which we interpret to be the origin for the source of not of the prohibition of Otsar. So seeing that the pasuk talked about the the issue, um, five year kol there, and what was the pasuk? The continuation of the pasuk. I don't have it handy in front of me. Yeah. Ish am ishu isha al yitz. Well, we don't have a gum, we have a chumash handy. Yes, well, it was right before Melachai Dayam. Right, but those positive that had your hold saw. It said you'd see her in it. There was a positive that talked about not carrying out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the point of it being that the, the Lashon and the Torah that serves as one of the bases for Hotza, you talked about Hotza, uses the word Hotza taking out, and therefore Hotza is considered the Av, Hachnasa, which is the which is the concept in reverse, is considered therefore the tolda of hotza, even though it's the same thing only inverted. Uh, uh, okay. Bartem shofar trua. That's the one they tried to bring in. Remember, we didn't agree so much about that. Isho mm. isha. So it's not there. It's actually, it's actually found. There's another pasuk that's found with the mon is brought, which where Moshe says, "Ish al yitzemi meno bayom bayom hashish bayom hashvi'i," that no one should go out to find the mon. So the more dar more darshan is in another place that yot yish not to go out means not to carry out. They couldn't carry out. So Hotza, therefore, is the actual Av, whereas carrying it is considered a Toldo. So the, the bottom line, the coming back to our Gemara here, is as a result, would, does Rebbe actually hold that if you do the same Malacha and two variations of the very same Malacha, okay, which is Hot, Right. But I was, if I'm looking for the actual word where, where Hotza, Yitzia, is actually the actual, the reason why that's called the Av, and Hachnasa is actually the Toldo even though they're the same thing, just in inverted ways. The bottom line is, if you do two variations on the same malacha, would Rebbe really say that you have two? L'meim and the Mechayev Rebbe are told of Makamov, V'yotanya, but don't we have a drusha of Rabbi Yehud Anasi, a very famous drusha, that says, one of the gematrias that comes up in the, in the Talmud, says, Eila Hadvarim, this is talking about Shabbos, uh, Eila Hadvarim, so Rebbe Omer, Dvarim, Hadvarim, Eila Hadvarim. Let's see how this goes again. So Eila is 36, the Gemachi of Eila, Eila Hadvarim, and had, had, Dvarim is two, and Hadvarim is another one. So Dvarim is two, multiple, it's plural. Hadvarim says, adds one to the two, makes it three, and the Gemachi of Eila is 36. 
And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi uses this drash, it's obviously a drash, a type of remez, to say, the Eilu Lamates Malachos Nemo Lamosh Sinai. These are the 39 Malachas that are said to Moshe Sinai, and this was the found, the found in the Mishnah, on the Afayin Heim with Beis, or on Gimel with Beis, which enumerated the 39 Malachos. And that tells me that they are going to be the, the total maximum number of Malachas that a person can do. So therefore, how is it possible that Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, a Rebbe, could suggest, or that Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda would suggest that really Rebbe, Believed that you would be chayav two, one for throwing in and one for throwing out, one for throwing Rishus Rabbim to Rishus Yachid, one another one for being chayav for itself or Rishus Yachid to Rishus Rabbim in the very same throw. That's kind of the double jeopardy of being chayav twice for the very same malacha of Hotzoach Nasa. So that's the question that Rav Chaga asks on this brisa, on this interpretation by Rav Yehuda Mashmuel about Rebbe who said you're chayav for throwing through Rishus Yachid Makora. And Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel said that Rabbi, when he says chayv, he means you're chayv twice. Mm-hmm. So now the question is, would Rabbi really say this? Yeah. So the Gemara doesn't really give an answer. I said there's another hiccup here in the Sogya. The Gemara doesn't really answer this. The Gemara assumes that this is not Rabbi. But rather than simply saying, oh, it really it's, uh, this is wrong, you find it interrupts it with a kind of an interjection, with a discussion. Amar Rav Yosef, Amar Rav Yosef, so Amar Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef said to Rav Chaga, Mara Hamas Nilei Vakashalei, you Rav Chaga learned the statement that, that there are Chayv for tw- two, that Rebbe said Chayv twice, and yet Akashi, the Rebbe had the Rebbe, because you don't think Rebbe would hold you Chayv twice. Anan, in our tradition, we learned this so was going on, Rabbi Yehuda, Ad Rabbi Yehuda Masninan, Velo Kashlon. We learned this concept of being Chayv with two different kinds of Isurim is not referring at all to the case about the Rosh Hashayachid Makora, but it's dealing with a different kind of scenario, a similar kind of thing to the extent that you have two different types of variations of the same malacha of Hotzah. In this case, it's going to be Hotzah and Havara throwing and carrying in a Rosh Hashayachid And it's not Rabbi Yehuda Nasi who we know has the drush of Dvarim Hadvarim. It happens to be in Brisa that talks about Rabbi Yehuda who we don't have any proof that he would not say that you have for multiple malachos, multiple times of the same malach itself at the same time. We just don't have a reference. You quoted a clear brisa, a clear statement of Rebbe, that he only says 39. You can only be chayv each one maximally once. But maybe Rabbi Yehuda would not say that as well. Maybe Rabbi Yehuda would say that you have two. Are we confusing you so far? Oh, we don't know. But we don't. But we're going to we're going to bring it. In other words, you who learned that this concept of being of getting a double whammy, as referring to Rabbi, Rabbi. Rabbi Yehuda Nasi in the scenario of Rishus Aram to Rishus Aram through Rishus Yachid, and you had a kasha, we had the same concept of a double whammy on a different kind of brisa, similar because it deals with the malach of of carrying and carrying out. And wherever it was not a brisa that was exactly the one that you quoted, and it surely was not Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, it was Rabbi Yehuda, the different Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Bar-Eloi. The standard Rabbi Yehuda comes up in Mishnahis, who we do not know would not say that you're Chayv too. Right? We normally assume that everybody agrees you're not Chayv too, but we don't know that for sure in certain cases, certain Tanoim. Certain, 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 so this is the... Res- I don't see why you shouldn't be Chayv too. Admittedly, it's one Menorah, but, I mean, you can have multiple infractions yeah. of the same prohibition on the same Shabbos. Yes, correct. And if, and if you did not know that you had done them wrong in the interim, you would only be maxed out at once. That's correct. How can I describe it? It's like a cop that's following you, and he sees you suddenly go, oh, he clocks you all suddenly at 130 kilometers, you slow down and go up again to 130 kilometers, you slow down and you go up again to 130 kilometers. Is he going to give you three tickets? But if he pulls you over and he and he gives you the ticket and then you get up and drive away, then you chive again. Right. You see the difference? Yes. Okay. And if and if he if he and I'm trying to think of an example. So that that's a good example. example. That's a good example. So that's what we're dealing with here. Right. Essentially, the same act. The uh, same malacha occurs two, two times within the same helam, within the same non-awareness, the non yidia non-knowledge of the prohibition of the act itself. So that's the case. Now, if you do two different malachos, you'd be chayv too. But these are two variations on the same malacha, hotzah and achnasa. 
So actually, if you didn't know that it was prohibited and you were, um, I don't know, you knew and then you forgot, because you do need to know at one point and then forget that it's prohibited, or you forget at Shabbos, then you can be going in and out the whole day or carrying in and out the whole day only chayav once. So sometimes a little bit of knowledge is not so good. <laughs> but that's that's normally what we say now. That is an unusual kind of situation. For that matter, I guess you could ask yourself, if a person ate chazer and then ate more chazer and then ate more chazer, how much chazer was he? How many how many how many well, stamps is he loading up? Sitting, it'd only be one. Right. Surely. Are you going to be chayv for each for each for each for each oh, oh, yeah. of chelav or of chazer? So you actually, there are opinions that say you may be chayv for each chazayis of chelav. Okay, but that. But that's that's not Shabbos. Shabbos you seems to be bench a little afterwards, multiples. Right, but you didn't bench afterwards, and even if you did bench afterwards, even if you did bench afterwards, it might the question is you're saying it's a different meal. I'm not sure that makes a difference. And it sounds logical that it should, but I'm not sure it does. But Shabbos clearly most opinion, most opinions say that the reason we have thirty nine malachas, the reason the Mishnah details thirty nine malachas, and remember this is such an unusual halacha that have thirty nine different malachas. It's a very, tail, very detailed prohibition. I think most prohibitions, you can just say, like, chazer is chazer. The Torah says you can't eat chazer, you can't eat chazer. Now, there are all kinds of questions that can come up. What if the chazer has no taste? What if it's chazer bones that have been desiccated? But by, basically, it's one prohibition. Shabbos has a prohibition of malacha. But the malacha is then subdivided to 39 prohibitions. I mean, you could have easily argued the other way around. Even if you did all 39, you'd only be high for one. What's the difference whether I did Malacha 1, Malacha 2, Malacha 3, Malacha 4, the Avos Malachos, I broke Shabbos. Right? Shabbos is talking about not doing, you know, Sheish Yomim Taseh Malacha, Malach Decha, V'yom Shri Shabbos Lashem Malachacha. It doesn't say do this Malacha, not that Malacha. So the whole concept of Malachos is a very unusual one, a subdivision which breaks one, pro, what looks like one prohibition, into multiple of 30, into 39 different prohibitions. So it's a very different concept. So at least it's limited to a maximum of 39. The sky's not the limit. Okay, unless you knew about it in the interim and then forgot or, or decided to do it anyway. So, um, so, so, but Rebbe, but clearly Rebbe Huda Nasi, Rebbe has this drasha that is quoted uh, in the seventh parak and is quoted here and other places of Dvarim Hadvarim Eila Hadvarim. The thirty-nine is telling me the maximal number to tell me you can't do more than that. We've seen this kind of drasha in other in other venues. So the Gemara says, well, okay, so it's not going to be Rebbe, but you heard you so you have a brisa, some kind of thing, and someone said something that you're going to be chayav for double whammy for doing the same malacha, two variations on the same malacha. It's not about a Rebbe. Brisa. It's not the brisa you mentioned. It's going to be a different brisa. We learned it about a brisa of Rabbi Yehuda, not Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, but Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Bailoi, the famous chaver of Rabbi Meir, Rabbi uh, Nechemia, Rabbi Yosi, the student of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Yehuda Nasi is a number of generations subsequent, three or four, gen- two generations maybe later. So what's the case we have? So Anan mid ad Rabbi Yehuda Masnina. We learned in our brayz of Rabbi Yehuda. As a result, we didn't have a question because we don't know that Rabbi Yehuda would not say. Maybe he does say that you have twice. What's the brayz? The Tanya. You threw me Rishus Hayochet to Rishus Rabim. Don't say Zorik. We mean Zorik. You threw me Rishus Hayochet to Rishus Rabim. The other Abraham is Rishus Rabim. So this is not going in and out, this is throwing to Rosh Hashanah, and once you threw it, it continued going into Rosh Hashanah. So you gave it such a zet, such a, such a, such a throw, that when it, when it tra- traveled over the boundary line into the public domain, it kept going and went even past four Amos. So you did two things, you did the malacha, of, you did the same malacha, two variations of the same, of malacha, Hotza and Havara. Right? I mean, so Rabbi Yehuda Machayev and Chachamim Potim. So Rabbi Yehuda said Chayev, and the Chachamim said that you're Potter. Now we got really have to understand what Chayev and Potter mean. The Gemara will talk about that. But ostensibly, if we mean Chayev too, so what Rabbi Yehuda is saying, you're Chayev twice, and the Chachamim says you're Potter from the second one, you only Chayev once. And on this, I'm Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel. On this is what the, the statement of Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel says was Machayev Shtayim. When he said, Chayev, you Chayev twice. When we learned the statement of Yehuda Mashmuel before, we said the statement of the double whammy being Chayev twice, God went on to whom? Went on 
Rebbe. We said it can't be because Rebbe would never say that. So this was going on this Bryce of Rabbi Yehuda. This is what his statement was, Chayev Shtayim. The Omar, Omar Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel, Mechayev Hoi Rabbi Yehuda Shtayim. Rabbi Yehuda says Yechayev twice, Achas Mishim Otsov, Yachas Mishim Havara. Yechayev two, one because of Otsov, one because of Havara. Why did they say that? Now here he explains why. This is not about feeling that it stops or clutes or something like that. He kind of proves it from the very machlokas itself. The Esau connect the Chadahu, because if you read in this Brisa, which is a machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim, Rabbi Yehuda says Chayv, and the Chachamim say once. If you say that when Rabbi Yehuda says Chayv, it means you have one Iser. And when the Chachamim say Potter, it's less than one, which is going to be zero. zero no, right? Why would the Chachamim say that you're Potter? Could it ever be imaginable that if you're inside, you throw something out, it keeps flying and it goes four almost, that you're completely off the hook? I mean, at the very least, you threw something in from the inside to outside. So is it possible to conjecture that when the Chacham say Pater, they mean Pater Lagamre? It can't be. No, who, no one would ever say that. Ella, it must be. Pater from the second one. And when Rabbi Yehuda says Chayev, he doesn't mean Chayev one, he means Chayev two. So the machlokus between Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim is Chayev about Chayev two or Chayev one. Are we going to say that you get a double whammy when you throw it and it continues, continues flying? You get Hautza, the Yisra of Hautza, plus the Avera of Havara. Or no, it's one malacha that gets combined together because you can't do, you can't get a double whammy on doing two variations of the same malacha. Av and Tolda, together at the same time. So that's the proof. Would you say that means the Machacham say your parts are completely? You, you, you took it out. You threw it out from inside to outside. So therefore, must be, must be that the Rabbi Yehuda says that Yechayev too. That's the Gemara's, that's the Gemara's understanding about what Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Mashmuel said on the Brisa about Rabbi Yehuda's argument with the Chachamim. Rabbi Yehuda says Chayev means Chayev too. So far, so good. So we don't really know, therefore, that Rabbi that Rabbi ever said you really Chayev too in the previous case. You get the impression that this, therefore, was knocked off. The previous discussion about Rabbi, we, really Rabbi he would have said Makora is an important value, but if it goes through the Rishus Hayochet Makora, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would have said Rabbi would have said you only have one. So now we're going to come to this whole discussion about Rabbi Yehuda's this Rabbi Yehuda. The premise so far is why do we have to say that Rabbi Yehuda is chayv? Because if Rabbi Yehuda says chayv, why do we have to say Rabbi Yehuda is chayv too? Because if he said Rabbi Yehuda is chayv one, there must be the Chacham is saying chayv zero. And, it, and that doesn't that doesn't clink. That doesn't that doesn't stem. That makes no sense. That the Chacham is saying Pater and God and Son completely. So now the Gemara takes another hiccup. They said, so let's see the Sugi came and hiccups back and says your premise is off. In other words, this is a Sugi. A lot of premises get presented and then the premises get rejected or at least deferred or suspended. So the Gemara says, Mimai. How do you know for sure that your premise is correct? That Rabbi Yehuda says Chayv two two, and the Chacham Rabbi Yehuda says Chayv two, and the Chacham say you're, you're a potter from one, and but still Chayv from one. Dilma laolam eima lecha, Rabbi Yehuda Chayv Yehuda Mechayv and Mechayv. Maybe really Rabbi Yehuda says you're Chayv for one, which means that the Chacham say potter. How much is you potter for? You're potter for all. You you're the Chayv for zero. Because maybe we're not talking about two and one. Like you thought it was, like Rav Yehuda Mashmuel said, this both talking about two and one, but not one and zero. Maybe we're not talking about one and zero. So if we're talking about one and zero, we have to explain why the Chacham ever going to say part of the so Gemara says, I'll tell you why. And the Rabbana say your potter completely. And why would the Chacham say your potter completely? Because the person who threw it out said, The person said, once I wanted to kind of land right when it comes outside the Rishus Arabim. In other words, I want to throw it out from my house, and I want it to land once it goes outside the window, once it goes outside the courtyard, once it goes past the fence. My intention is I've got this piece of junk, I want to throw it out of my possession, I don't really want to throw it through Shusarabim, I want to throw it just right outside the window. Ah. So what happened? That's not what happened. So his das, his, his machshava was not carried out. Was not to throw it into Rishus His nose, his das was not to continue have it flying through Rishus Arabim. You can think probably of an example. You want to litter. Case, you're, you're in your backyard. Here's a good example. Yeah. You're in your backyard, and you have a piece of um, um, debris from the yard. I don't know, a limb of a tree. 
So you know what? If you throw it over the fence, the city will never know it was you. The guy will come, the guy will come collecting leaves, he'll collect it as well. But if you throw it and you throw it and it ends up in the street, you're in big trouble. So you really want to throw it outside your house, outside the fence, but you want it to land right on top of the fence. And you can't really just carry it out because you don't have something to carry it out. So you take this little piece of, I don't know, grass, leaves, fence, I don't know what it would, and you just want to throw it over the fence. And it should land right away when it goes over the fence. But instead what happened, it flew through all the way. So now you're probably, you're, you not only got a problem with the city, but the question is, what, what is the issue with Shabbos? So the Chachamim would say that in this kind of scenario, with this kind of scenario, you would actually may have no, you may have no problem even for Shabbos. And what happens? So here's the issue. So the Machlokas is going to go back to our old friend, Kluta Kmishu and Chadami. Okay, what happens? You threw it outside the wall, and it kept going. What did you really want it to happen? You wanted it to stop when it came over the wall. So if you say kluta kmishuncha, if you say when it flies through Rishusarabim, it's considered like it's stopgap as it moves along. So when it flew outside the Rishusarabim, what did it do? It stopped. It just kept going. Sorry, the scenario, no, no, sorry. I, I, okay. I admit that I lost. We seem to be dealing with a case of Rishus Arabim, Rishus Arabim through private. Uh, no, we're, we're talking about a case now, of Rishus Sayyid. No, we're now not. We're, going back we're talking Yohid. about the case of Rabbi Yehuda is a case of Rishus Sayyid to Rishus Arabim. Go back, you missed the line. Okay? The, the price of Rabbi Yehuda is as follows. Rishus Sayyid to Rishus Arabim, the other Abraham is Rishus Arabim. It's probably about the sixth line or so. Says the Tanya. Okay. okay. So in other words, he's in his house. Right. Here's his house. He throws it outside yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah. Right, he wanted it simply to stop there, and it kept going. Yeah, yeah. So what do we consider this to be? Do we consider this to be that it ended up really one throw, and it keeps going into Rishus Arabim, or do we say it fluff, fluff, went out of Rishus Arabim, yeah. went to Rishus Arabim, stopped, stopped. halachically stopped? And then consider starting again and continue flying across the Rosh Hashanah. That's what Kluta Kamishu and Chodami is all about. That even though it's moving, we're considering as if it's like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. multi frames and slow it's gap. Like stop. stop gap action. Right. That's what Kluta Kamishu and Chodami If it's Kluta Kamishu and Chodami, then so, then, once. so when it came out of my courtyard, right. it stopped. Right. So and, one of and that's one of Avera. Right? What's in the, the next one is Karis, Avara. But I can't be high for a second Avera for the same variation on the same Malacha. Right. But if I say that Kluta Lav Kemishun Chadam, if I say that Kluta is not Kemishun Chadam, then what happened was I threw it from here and it ended up here, but I only wanted it to go here. Right. So I didn't do my Malacha. So I'm high for zero. It happened to be, if I say that it stopped and then started again, so that's a separate issue, have my, my issue with the city. But in terms of what I want to do, it stopped here, which is what my intention was. And then it restarts, because Klutu Kamishuncha, Klutu Kamishuncha says, even though it's flying, it's considered stopped in Rosh Hashanah. But if I want with Shemes? So that's the question. Is it going to be Malachas Machshemes? Is it 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 Right? I mean, it's not my malacha. So without the kluta, though, assuming we don't accept kluta, Correct. I intended clearly to throw it into the Rishut HaRabim in a way, but not well, I, really. I intended to, to make it stop, make it stop. right away when it entered Rishut HaRabim. I wanted to stop within three amos of, of when it entered. I did but not even, want it to go. Wouldn't, that, that's not a problem? You'd say that would be a problem, except that that's not what happened. But if, if, it, didn't, if it didn't do what I wanted to do, Right. If it did not do what I want that's to do, I'm that's not, not Malachas Machshevitz. It's a Malach, it's not, it's Malachas, and I was Malachas, uh, it's not Dovashem not, Miskavitz, not, not, not what I didn't want to do. Right. So if something happens I did not want to do, I'm never Chayev. I'm going to say never Chayev. I'm Even not Chayev. If I had done what I wanted it to do, I would be Chayev. Regardless, correct, right. Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. I don't know. I mean, uh, you can think of a lot of scenarios. I want to do one malach, and I did a different kind of malach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this case, I wanted a malach to, even though the two variations are the same malach. But my intention was it should stop within that first foot when it entered with Shusarabi. So it didn't go where I wanted to go. Now, of course, you're going to ask, well, you know, what happens in normal cases? I, how can I ever be chayef throwing in a Shusarabi? Do I know exactly where it's going to go? Right? Can I say that I'm, I'm throwing it from here and I yeah, want it to land at exactly 4.1 yeah. 
it um, almost across? And the answer is, most cases, I don't really care where it lands. Right. You don't have a specific intention. Right? right, correct. Now, you could argue if people are playing football and there's a, you know, or playing baseball and you want to hit it in a certain left field and it goes to the right field, so it wouldn't be high because you wanted to hit it in the left field so you could go to the Romans could score, want to hit it over the right, whatever it is. But that's not a normal scenario. And the Gemara is actually going to entertain that discussion at the end. What actually, when would you be high of? When the basic guy basically yeah. says, the guy says, when would you really be high? When the guy's just throwing it out. When, in other words, if he threw it out and he says, I don't really care where it lands. Exactly. I don't care if it out. lands one feet, two feet, three feet, four feet, or whatever. So, so, so yeah. that would be chayev. Right. right? If, he, if he says, I don't really care where it goes, and it goes four to four almost, so it goes beyond, I don't care. So that may be a scenario where he would be chayev. But the case we're trying to suggest is, how do you know? Let's keep the eye on the ball here. Right. What's the topic here? How, How do, you do you know that Rabbi Yehuda yeah. says you chayev twice, twice and, and the Chachamim say potter means chayev once and potter from one? Right. Maybe right. Rabbi Yehuda says you only chayev for one, right. <coughs> and the Chachamim, when they say chayev for zero, potter, they mean chayev zero. zero right. Why they chayev for zero? Because, because he only wanted to throw it right away when it fell into Rosh Hashanah, right. and therefore the fact that it continued beyond that his malacha, his machshava was not even carried out. The malacha of Hotza, the machshava of Hotza was not carried out. Exactly. Clear. Why? And that will depend on whether you consider kluta k'mishuncha, whether you consider this flying in the air as having stopped momentarily, stop gap, or not having stopped. So that's is where kluta k'mishuncha comes Absolutely. back a second time. So therefore, so the, 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 the discussion now is to try to negate the proof that we thought that Rabbi Yehud, the Machlokas and Rabbi Yehud and the Chachamim could include multiple, a double whammy for the same variation of a Malacha Ab and Tolda together. So Igmar says, how do you know it's really true? Maybe Rabbi Yehud says you only chayev one. Rabban and Patri, Lagamre, when Rabban and say you potter, means potter, you chayev for zero. What's the case? Kigon, the Omar, Kigon, the Omar. Adonav Golei, Lereshus Arabim, Tanoach. The guy said very specifically, I wanted to stop once it comes to Rishus Arabim, not to fly any further. Again, here's the basis of the Machlokas. According to Rabbi Yehuda, we say the moment it entered Rosh Hashanah, it stopped. His Machshava, Melechus Machshavas was done. His intention was done. Ayah continues flying afterwards. That's a new fly. Right? But that's but not that you chayv twice. Why are you not chayv twice for the new fly? Because Rabbi Yehuda would never say chayv twice for the same malacha, two variations on the same malacha. I've been told it together. So Rabbi Yehuda would say you're chayv, because he says, Klut to Kamishun Chadami, Vyavi Savid Le Machshafta, Rabban and Savre, Lo Amin and Klut to Kamishun Chadami. We don't say that. And as a result, Velo Savid Le Machshafta, and his Machshava. His intention was never done altogether because he wanted simply for it to stop when it came over the fence, and instead it kept going and it flew more, four more almost into a shusarabim. So his machshavas was not done. However, no one would say that you chayev too. Aval told of a makom av lo machayev Rabbi Yehuda. Uh, however, Rabbi Yehuda himself would not say in the same way that we thought that Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi would not say. Neither Rabbi Yehuda would say that you have two for for this malach for this tolda. His view is that the extra amos that it went is just a tolda of the original. Uh, right. So that's that's really pretty much where the Gemara is going to end up in the premise that Rabbi Yehuda is going to say chayv because the issue is machlok is klutu k'mishon. The Chacham will say pot means pot l'gamri. The Gemara is not finished yet. But that's primarily that premise. What we've done is we've dissuaded ourselves from believing yeah. that Rabbi Yehuda, the famous Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi, would, would have thought that you have two for doing two variations on the same halacha. Okay? So, so the Gemara has just a, a sidebar question. It's really not just a sidebar. The Gemara has a, a discussion on Daf Ayn Gimel, Ayn Hamad Bays. Where after listing all the thirty nine malachas and the and that are in the that are also on Shabbos, the Gemara says that Rabbi Yehuda added Rabbi Yehuda added two more malachas, Shovet and Medakdek. These are um, he has forty one malachas. And th- th- that's what we think. We're not sure. Okay, it looks like it, now we're not even quite sure what it means that he adds. But the words are, and this is the next line in the Gemara, you just have to look where the star is. Rabbi Yehuda Mosif, and I'll go back and read it once I explain what they are. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef Mosif, Esa Shovet V'yamedakdek. And he said, I want to add two more. Or it looks like we're not quite sure, is he adding Toldos or is he adding Avos Malachos? Shovet is, um, 
What is Shove? Shove is where you're kind of, I think, banging on the loom, I think. These are two things really deal with the with the loom process, with the weaving process. And Medak Day is after you put in the um, the whip and the wharf, you actually need to bang on this thread a couple of times to actually kind of loosen it up or make make sure it's not too tight and too twisted. So he, so we, there are a number of malachas that relate on the 39 malachas to working on the loom. It's yeah. extremely complicated to understand the loom, but it looks like he was adding two more. And the Chachamim said to him, no, you don't have to add these additional malachos. Right? You don't have to add these additional malachas. Let's go back and read on Gemar now. So, so the, so the Gemar says, the, the, the Tanya, Rabbi Yehuda, Mosif, Esa, Shafa, Shoed, Vamadakte, Kalgamrulo, the Chachamim said to him, now you don't need, these, these are not additions. Hashoved, Hareu, Bechal, Mesach. Shoved is part of a malacha called Mesach. And Medaktik is part of a malacha called Oreg, which is weaving itself. What's Mesach? I always get confused with these malachos. Uh, let's see, I have a handy dandy chart somewhere of all the malachos here. This is a safer that I saw in the uh, in the colon, an illustrated safer of, of explaining the whole Kai. of the weaving yes. process. Okay, all so, these terms. Yes. So Mesach is actually threading the loom, tying the thread from the front to the back roller. Okay, and there's there are really in the listing of the thirty nine malachos. There are a number of malachos dealing with the loom, including uh, mesach, osheshte batinirim, oreg, oreg, which is actually weaving two threads, and then potsea, your thinning threads, and a number of other malachos. But mesach is actually threading the loom. So Rabbi Yehuda, so the Chachamim said back to Rabbi Yehuda that you wanted to add um, shovate, which is, um, I think, banging on the, on this, which is also really included in threading the loom. And then you wanted to add as well, medaktik, that's included in the, actually the malach of oreg. So you don't need to add two extra malachos. They're already there. In other words, they're just simply parts of the malach itself. So that's the discussion that comes up on Ayin, Ayin Ham with Bez that the Gemara is going to quote. But so let me just come back and read that again. So Gemara says, the premise that we have now is that Rabbi Huda does not say that Jechai have two malachos right. twice for two for the same, var- two variations of one malacha. So Gemara says, Lo so good. I thought you really think this, but we'll see, maybe not. The Tanya, here comes this discussion. Rabbi Huda, Mosif, Shafa, Shovet, Vamadaktik. Rabbi Huda adds two things, Shovet and Madaknik. And number low, so Chacham said back to him, Shovet, Hare Bechal, Mesach. Shovet is part of threading. And Madaknik, Hare Bechal, Loreg. Medaknik is part of actually running the loom or doing two stitches, two weaving two threads on the loom. So what is this discussion about? My love, so the Gemara thinks for a moment, this is where it seems to want to backtrack, maybe Rabbi Huda says you chai for two variations or twi- twice. My love is not the discussion that Rabbi Huda had with the Chachamim about these two additional things that he wants to add. My love, my love, the Avdin Hula Tarvayu Behadi Adadi. It's not when Rabbi Huda came to speak to the Chachamim, he was talking about doing a Tolda together with a Malacha. That he was saying that if you did Shovet, Together with um, with Mesach, and if you did Medakdek together with Oreg, mm-hmm. you'd be chay of two separate malachos. And one of the things for a moment, what Rabbi Yehuda was adding was not separate malachos. He was not going from thirty nine to forty one. He was simply saying that in these cases, you'd be you be chay of twice if you did these two variations. If you kind of banged it and you weave the thread, you see, be chay of two because there are two variations on the same malacha. That's the Gemara thinks at this point. It's obviously not going to be the answer. So my love, the Avdin lo Tzavai b'had the Adad. The Shema Minon. You see from this, Mechayev Hoya Rabbi Yehuda told the Makamov. You see, Rabbi Yehuda was trying to suggest that these two additional malachos are not additional malachos; they're additional toldos variations on the two malachas of weaving, and you'd be chai for each one if you did it together with its major of malacha of the weaving process. So that's so that would show that Rabbi Yehuda says you chai of two double whammy. So Gemara says not really so, and a little bit question about the Nusach exactly. Me my dilma laolam davale lechudim. That's not really true. Maybe Rabbi Yehuda is talking about where you did hal lechudim or hal lechudim. You did each one separately. And Rabbi Yehuda told of Makamov lo Machayev, and Rabbi Yehuda really never said that Yechayev in a Tolda 
together with Nav. He doesn't say a chayv a double whammy, but here's what Rabbi Yehuda says. Rabbi Yehuda Savar, Hani told us Ninhu. Rabbi Yehuda actually was saying there are two more Av Malachos, not 39, but you're going to have a maximum of 41. And the Chachamim Savre, no, the Chacham said, no, you know what? These are not additional Malachos. It's not 39 becomes 41. These are subdivisions of two of the Malachos that you already have about how the weaving process is. They would have had to change the Russian. Well, or else, or Rabbi Yehuda would not have agreed to that drasha. Right, it's yeah, Rabbi Yehuda yeah. Anasi has the drasha. He, right, does, right, right. he does not have that drasha. The drasha is the drasha which we assume and accept was said by Rabbi Yehuda Anasi. That's why I said when I presented this, we don't know that Rabbi Yehuda does not say two double whammy. Right, this Rabbi Yehuda. Right, this Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi. And that's why the Gemara goes back and forth. And the Gemara seems to say that initially the Gemara thinks for a moment that this discussion that Rabbi Yudah has with the Chachamim is about maybe Malacha adding a tolda together with a Malacha. The Gemara says not true. Rabbi Yehuda was trying to argue that she'd be 41 and not 39. But he, but he never disagreed with the basic other premise that if among the 41, right. you couldn't do two variations of each of the 41 and be chayv. He just, instead of having six different types of Malachas for weaving, he now had eight kinds of Malachas for weaving. Okay? Yeah. And the Gwar says, Tainda, I'll prove to you that this is really true. The Katani that the the um that the when they quoted when Rabbi Yehuda spoke in this discussion between himself and the Chachamim that we just quoted, it says the Katani Rabbi Yehuda Mosif, Rabbi Yehuda added. So what do you mean he adds? Adding is not is not adding another tolda. Adding means he's adding thirty nine plus two more to make forty one. E Amr Bishlama Avos if he says he's adding two more malachos to make forty one. My Mosif Mosif Avos. I understand what Mosif means. He's adding Avos. El Yamr told us my Mosif. What's he adding? So therefore, it can't be that he's adding really a toldos among the malacha because he doesn't. He still says that if you did the, the toldos and the off together, you only have one. Except he says there are forty one maximum forty one, not not thirty nine possibilities. Okay, and in fact, it Manami, we even have a statement that says the said by Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef, the Amri Travayu, the Amri Travayu, the both Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef say, Lo Chayv Rabbi Yehuda Ela Achas. That Rabbi Yehuda said, you only Chayv for one for one time for each of the forty nine, forty one, or thirty nine of the Malachos. Okay, so that's really the hardest part of the Gemara. I'm not finished yet. Still got a few minutes. Okay, so where are we, just that so we kind of keep our eye on the ball, where are we in terms of this at this point? What have we said? So therefore, if I throw, if I throw from inside to outside, and it keeps going, I could be Chayev 1, according to Rabbi Yehuda, right. provided that I believe in Kluta Kamisho Hencha, right. and the Chachamim would say that I don't yeah, agree to Kluta Kamisho Hencha, and Potter, and I'm dealing specifically in a case where I wanted it to stop when it reached the others, when it reached Rosh Hashanah. Yes, Correct. So that's the conclusion of the Gemara. And no one says so far that you have two for the same malacha. Right. We've eliminated Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, and we've eliminated Rabbi Yehuda Bar-Eloi. So no one says that you have for two. And that's the conclusion, by the way, of the Gemara. No one, yet, no one has been found yet who would be of two at the same Ooh, time for yeah. doing a tolda and an av together at the same time. So we, we, we've kind of re- rejected Rabbi, Rabbi on the first Samad Aleph, and we rejected Rabbi Yehuda Bar-Eloi in the second, the second discussion, the second b'raith. So there's no reason to require that. This is a common theme in Gemara, that the Gemara seems to want to prove that there's no machlokas. They're talking about different cases. Yeah. They agree on they agree on everything yeah. except yeah. when he says this, he's talking yeah, really about this means. situation. Yeah. And when he says that, he's talking about a different situation. Correct. Okay, that's that's true. That's right, the sta- right. standard case. So they're case. saying they 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 seem to want to reach the conclusion that all of the chachamim agree. They want to try to reconcile sources. They believe in the sanctity of sources. Right. It's hard to take a source and throw it away and say Mishabeshta. It's hard to say Eina Mishnah. It's hard right. to say right. Epoch. It's hard to say Tani change. It does it on occasion. But most of the time it tries to say one, 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 one person said it's, it's light and one person said it's dark. Right. So the answer is one person had the light switch on, one person had the light switch off. One person was talking about at 12 o'clock in the middle of the night, one person was talking at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day. One person was talking about winter, one person was talking about the summer. That's true. They tried to kind of make sure the two, the two sources are, can be reconciled and fit into a lot of places. That's right. Standard fare. 
That's what makes that's what actually makes Gemara probably so fascinating, because you're starting with the examples and you by disentangling them you kind of underscore the principle. The principle comes out really from learning about the, the, the sources themselves. Well, you have statements of both, like they say, the right. Barises in different places, right. and how do you reconcile right. them all, right? So in other words, we, we use these examples of these Barises to try to discuss whether you'd be high of two Avon and Avon told it together at the same time. And then we use it to try to understand, is Rabbi Yehuda really adding a 44, 41, two more, Avos or not? So that's really how the Gemara's logic is exactly as you said it. So, I mean... This is true, and it's different for someone who's not studying Talmud. It makes it a very unique experience. Okay, but what makes the next line in, unusual is the Gemara is going to say, all right, so we've agreed that it's, they can't be chai for two. But according to the approach that you had before, that you thought that Rabbi Yehuda would have been chai for two, that's the Gemara is now going to go back. It said, going back to what you thought before, even though we've thrown it out, mm-hmm. this is, doesn't happen usually. Usually you have a contradiction, you have a, th- you have a premise, and you throw it out and change the premise. Very rarely do you have a case where the Gemara says, and based upon what you thought originally, what's going to happen in this? Because once we've tossed out the original premise, right. it's good by Charlie. That's right. mm-hmm. So the Gemara, now, the Gemara now does exactly what it normally does not t- tend to do. This is a different case. That's why I told you this is a bunch of hiccups here in the sugya. Yeah. So let's go back to see this Gemara. We have to do this to get up to two dots at least, maybe before we break, because otherwise you know, we can't start again on, uh, after, mm-hmm. after uh, either next week or the week after, okay? So Amale Ravina Ravashi. So Ravina says Ravashi. That's important. Ravina Ravashi at the end of Tzkufa Samoraim. So this is a much later strata that is put into the sugya. So after all is said and done, the Gemara has concluded. The sugya is over. But years later, generations later, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi, I'm sorry, Rabbi and Ravashi are discussing the what if. <laughs> so what if? What if the, the, you had not come up with this final answer? Right. What if we were back up? What if we had been back towards about the 10th ten, line on top of this, this top of the summer? Well, the mind the solik adait and meikara. According to what we thought initially, the mechayev hoi Rabbi Yehuda shtayim. Okay, then according to what Rabbi Yehuda thought initially, that really, when Rabbi Yehuda said Yechayev twice, this is where you threw it out from Rosh Hashayachit to Rosh Hashayachit, and it went four, four Amos, we thought at one point Rabbi Yehuda says Chayev means Chayev too, and when the Chachamim say Pater, what does Chachamim's Pater mean? One. Pater or one, and Chayev for one. That's what we thought, we got rid of that. Mm-hmm. But according to what we thought before, which has been subsequently been rejected, or disproven, or, or not applicable, mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. Why would you be Chayev too? We talk about Malachas Machsheves. Now you can, you can argue about Kluta Kmishuncha and Kluta Na Kmishuncha, but either you wanted to throw it or you didn't want to throw it. I mean, if you wanted to throw it here, well, then it's, it didn't go there. If it throw it in other words. So why would you be chayev too? How is it possible to be chayev too when you threw it out and continued for for more for more almost in the Rishus Rabbi? If you wanted to, to reach where it came into the Rishus Rabbi, well, then you shouldn't be chayev if it continued. Now, if you wanted to reach where it continued, then you can't say it stopped in the middle, it stopped when it fell over the Rosh Hashanah and started again. What, 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 what did you want? Mm-hmm. How could you be Chayv 2? Chayv 2 means that you wanted this to happen like this. Mm-hmm. In other words, the assumption is, you're Chayv 2, why are you Chayv 2? Because it came over, it did one malacha, and then it continued did another malacha. But what was your intention? Was your intention to reach here? Well, then the malacha stopped here. If the intention was to reach here, then you don't really care whether where the, where where what was in the middle. Mm-hmm. You should only be chayiv one. Why? How could you ever be chayiv one scenario? Two. Okay. I'm, I'm saying, how can you be chayiv two scenarios? You always have to look at what the person's intention is. And here's where the Gemara gives the answer that I told you before is going to apply to 99 of the cases of throwing in the Rishul Sarabim. So where would the case be that you could be chayiv two? So I'm be Omer kol makom shatir The guy is saying, I really want to be chayiv two because I really want to be chayiv wherever it falls. I don't really care where it goes. So therefore, he doesn't care. He wants it to throw into Rosh Hashanah. He wants it to keep going. He doesn't really care where it goes. Sky's the limit, or the, or the, the Rosh Hashanah is the limit. So he wants two things. He wants it to go out, and he wants it to continue. He doesn't really want it to go to a specific place. Right. Okay. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't care. 
Where it goes. In a Correct. Sense. He doesn't really care where it goes. But then, in other words, his concern is he really wants it to get into his, wherever it goes. He says, what's the, what's the term is used? <laughs> wherever it falls down. So in such a case, then his malach, his machshava was done. Because his machshava was two machshavas. One machshava, he wanted it to go out. Right. The second machshava, he wanted it to fly in Rishul Sarabim. So you don't want a specific place. So in such a case, in such a case, if that, if you believe that Rabbi Yehuda was talking about being Chayv 2 and the Chachamim being right. Chayv 1, that's the case we could have been Chayv 2. The Chachamim would say Chayv 1. Why? Because we don't say, we don't say Klutuk Mishuncha. That's a separate discussion. But in other words, the intention was being done, except that they, the two, the two actions get merged together. In other words, but if you say that Klutu Kamishuncha, that it's stopping in the middle, so he wanted to do two things, wanted to get it out, and he wanted to keep going wherever it went. So that's a case where you could be chayev for two, if you were thinking that Rabbi Yehuda would be saying that you'd be chayev for two Rav and Atolda together, which we subsequently rejected to say that Rabbi Yehuda does not say you're chayev two, he says you're chayev one. But if he, if he had, if we had believed that he was going to say chayev two, right. here's a scenario where we could have said that he's chayev for, would have been chayev for two. Okay? Maybe that is what he had in mind. We don't know. Right. Okay. Well, that's correct. Possibly. Okay. Let's see. We got a few minutes. Let's see if we can do the next couple of lines. I'm not sure we can catch it or not. Take us down to the bottom of the page. So these are all variations on that idea about of how far you're throwing it. So Gmar says as follows. We have a rule by Kosiva, by Kosev, Kotev. If you write, if you wrote, if you wanted to write, to be chayv, you're chayv for writing two letters. If I write one letter, I'm not chayv in a Torah. Two letters, two symbols, two numbers. What if I intended to write a, a letter, a word, and I didn't finish the word? So really, in a, even if I'm writing more than two letters, if I intended to write, let's say, four letters, and I only wrote two, I didn't really finish my, 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 my intention. What if, however, I was writing something like the name Shimon, or Shmuel, and I wrote Shin Mem, I wrote shame. And please don't ask me about the shin in the middle. The, the mem in the middle is, is square, and the one at the end is the one in the middle is different than the one at the end. Because it requires a whole discussion about that. Okay? okay? Whether they are interchangeable. So let's leave that out for a moment. Let's assume you can interchange the final mem and the middle mem. Okay? So when I wrote shin mem, even if I stop there, I'm chayev, I'm chayev because I did, pa, I did two letters. I did write a word. I didn't really write the entire word that I wanted to write, but I did write a word, a part of what I wanted to write. So writing Shem Mishimon or Shem Mishmuel would make me chayev, or Don from Daniel. I wrote Don, and I wanted to write Daniel. I know the nuns are different. Okay. okay? Yeah. Right? So um, if I wrote, so you can come up with whatever word you want to fit the bill. So those are the examples the Gemara, the Gemara gives. So the Gemara says, has a suggestion here at this minute that if I wanted to throw... Um, eight Amos in the, in the Rishul Sarabim. We're talking about intention. I wanted to throw eight Amos in the Rishul Sarabim. And I only threw four Amos in the Rishul Sarabim. Even before we get there, what happens if I wanted to throw it eight and I did throw it eight? I'm not chayv once. Just once, right? Just once, correct. We agree. Right. But if I throw it eight and then I pick it up again and I throw it eight again. Yeah, no, but now but, but so far, everything that we've learned said you're only going to be chayv once. So far, we have, you want to throw it eight, but it only went four. Right. So, in other words, well, we, we've given an example now about where you didn't really care, but let's, in this case, you do care. You want Absolutely. to throw it eight, but it only went four tvachim. You didn't specify location, you specified the amount of distance. Mm-hmm. So, if, if I intended to throw it four and I threw it four, I'm clearly chayv. Right. If, I, if I didn't really care and it went four, I'm chayv. What if I specifically wanted to throw it eight, eight almost across? And it only went four. So the Gemara entertains for a moment that this should be as similar as shame is to Shimon. Okay? So that's the Gemara's discussion. So Pshit on the Skavin Lizrok Shimon of Azarak Arba Hare Kosov Shem Shimon. So that's like writing shame. I did part of, a, I did a word from a flodger word, so I did four amos instead of eight amos. This is a little different than what we thought before, right? So in the previous case was I wanted a specific location. This is about throwing distance. Neskavin lizrok arba v'zarak shmona mahu. What if the other way around? I wanted to throw four, and I threw it eight. Okay, what would be the halacha? Now, you think it's, it's intuitively Yishmi Chayv because I threw it more, but that's the question. Mi Aminan Ho'apik Lei, do I say that, well, if I wanted to throw it four and it went eight, it really went four, but it just went four plus another four. It did four, just kept going, and I should be Chayv. Well, Dilma Hech the boy Ha Lo Nach. In other words, but really maybe uh, where, I, where I wanted to throw it, it didn't go. I wanted to throw right. four, and it went, yeah. went yeah. Right. that's what you would say, right? But the Gemara entertains that as a question. 
So what is the halacha? So the Gemara gives the answer and goes back to what we just said. V'lav hainu di Omer Ravino Ravashi. Did Ravino Ravashi say this? By the way, this you see that this sugi we're reading is post Ravino Ravashi. This is a, a, a very, very late sugya. It's from the very end of the Tukuf HaSam Morayim. So didn't we just learn, Ravi and Ravashi said, the, about this discussion about how Kibi Chayiv Tu, the Omer Lei, the Omer Kol Mokam Shatir Tzatonuach, that really wherever you want to throw it, you would fall. So in such a case, if I want to throw it, and I threw it, regardless of where I wanted it to be, it looks like I'd be Chayiv wherever it fell. So in other words, in other words, if I really didn't care where I, where I was going to throw it, I would be chayav. If I was specific, the way it's where I understand the Gemara, if I was specific about where I wanted to throw it, and it didn't go there, I would be, I would not be chayav. So if I was specific about the throw it for, what's the case here? I wanted to throw it, what was the second case? Case I wanted to throw it four and it went eight. So if I really wanted to throw it specifically for four and it went eight, my malacha was not, my machshav was not done. Right? If I really didn't care, I just was saying like, I hope it goes at least four. And it goes eight, then be, I would be chayav. So in other words, the premise that we just learned from this is applicable to anything where I really throw it. It depends on how makbed I am. If I'm very specific about where I want to throw the, throw the item and it doesn't go there, I'm not going to be chayav min ha-Torah. Right. As I told you, scenario about the baseball hitter. If he wants to knock it over the right field wall so that everybody can score, and he heads it over a line drive down across the pitcher, so maybe he's not chayav. Min ha-Torah. Okay, don't try this on Shabbos. Okay, now... Don't try this on Shabbos with there's no Erev, okay? So at any rate, so um, so this, so in other words, based upon the discussion of Ravina Ravashi, you see that the intention would really apply. Then the Gemara says, hiccup again. Oh, and you know what? Now that we answered that question, we told you it depends on what your intention is, your analogy to Shemi Shimon wasn't a good analogy to begin with. When you started the question on the first scenario, and you said, you know what? That if I wanted to throw, if I wanted to throw eight, and I did four, that's like writing Shemi Shimon, that's not really a good analogy. You thought it's the greatest analogy if I wrote shame instead of Shimon is like writing doing four instead of eight. That's wrong, says the Gemara. With the Ka'amrat, which you thought before, like six lines up when you started this last piece of Gemara, the Pshita, Hare of Shemi Shimon, Midami. How can you compare that? Hasam Kamad Lo of Shame Lo Mechtev Shimon. In order for me to write Shimon, I gotta write shame. I can't write Shimon without writing Shem Mem. Right. However, Hacha, Kamad Lozarik Arba, Lo Mizrake Timnaya, we mean to say if when I throw something, if I throw something just eight Amos across, did it land in four Amos? No. No, you can't no. really make the analogy of throwing eight and saying that I wanted to throw really eight and I threw four. One doesn't lead to the other. One is not a partial. You can't say that throwing it partially is the first step to throwing it fully. Because I normally can throw you throw this or throw that. I can't write a name without including the first letters. Got to write the name in order. Mm-hmm. The name is made of individual letters. The action of Zorik is one action of Zorik. So the fact that one is shorter, one is longer. I can't say one is included in the other, or one is halfway to the other, or it's related to it. They're different throws. They're different actions. Writing letters is combining individual letters together. So shame has to come before I write Shimon. So your initial premise is knocked off completely. So once again, it's another example where the Gemara presents something, presents something knocks off the premise originally when it started with. And that takes us up to the bottom of the page. Beautiful. Okay. So that'll be a good place for us to stop. Okay, so our question, what about next week? We have only a limited, a limited uh, representation here to, uh, to speak about it. As I say, I won't be here, but the, all the three are here and other people could be here. I think, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be here. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll learn. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll learn. Which is well, I, I'd I'd like to learn. I'll tell you why. Only because I am going to miss two Mondays in the middle and end of July. I'm going to so for your side. So, but but at any rate, so I I so we'll we'll learn on Monday night. Okay, I'll send a reminder to people, and they'll either be here or they won't be here. How's that?